I'm Lisa Dunham, co-convener of Hobe and West Coast Community Garden. So the main aims of the project are to get people outside, um, get people out in the, the garden and the woodland, um, help us improve the sort of environment of the garden and the woodland. Um, we have vegetable growing, fruit, flowers um, for the In Bloom project. We have a lot of different things happening at the garden and we're looking to promote health we're looking to get involved in sort of education uh, and, and sort of sharing skills and, and training as well for the local community. Lots of different opportunities are available. So we have a, a core group who are here every week and, and some of them are here many days a week. And so they're running the, the vegetable growing and the, the flower growing uh, and also running the charity because that's obviously you know, kind of behind the scenes stuff all needs done as well. Um, but Lots of people from the local community come and get involved in the growing, they get involved in the events, so kind of planning and running the events is, is a big draw. We have quite a, a pool of people that will get involved in that. And also just the local communities and groups, so the scouts are here every week, the schools are here every week, both the, the primary schools and the new local high school which is just opened across the road. So we've got a, a wide range of people getting down to the garden, um, and being outside and you know, kind of enjoying those opportunities and, and learning. I'm really proud that you know, we, we came together um, in 2011 as, as a group of people who had, had never run the community garden before. It was people from the community who had an interest in you know, kind of transforming this derelict, abandoned site. And you know, through a lot of hard work and, and perseverance um, and a lot of, kind of creativity and, and you know, ideas, uh, we've come to the point where we are now. You know, we've been on site for five years. Um, we've, you know, kind of transformed the area, and it, now it's accessible to everyone. Um, it's become somewhere that people will bring their families at the weekend for a walk in the woods, do the Stickman Trail, visit the Fairy Village, and you know, we are now growing veg and growing flowers for the for the benefit of the wider community. And it, it's lovely to see that that's happened, you know, from what was really an idea across a kitchen table. Well, there are various different aspects to the whole complex, but what we're doing here is basically growing vegetables. So we've got two polytunnels, but this polytunnel is solely for vegetables. The other one has a lot of flowers in it, baskets and things which they do for the West Calder community. And we have plots out the back also, eight plots, which we use also to grow the vegetables. So the main purpose is vegetable growing. I get a great deal of pleasure out of it. I come here three days a week, uh, usually 10 o'clock until 1 o'clock, but Sometimes I work longer, but that's beside the point. And I am retired, so therefore it gives me something to do. I'm occupied and happy. Fresh air. <laughs> yes, it's very good indeed. Satisfaction. It's just good to be here, get involved. Get lots of fresh air, meet people. I just see it. Can you see the general day to day run there? It's good. We really wouldn't be able to be where we are today without the support from TCV. They were instrumental in us setting up Green Gyms as a way of, sort of delivering the sessions. They trained all our Green Gym leaders um, in 2013 and subsequently. Um, we've also got now to the point where they have trained our leaders to then provide training so we're able to provide professional, professional training for our current leaders and also train new leaders in-house which is brilliant for us um, and also over the years the five years we've been on site we've been lucky enough to have had hundreds and hundreds of Royal Bank of Scotland staff on work days that have been run and led by TCB and that our volunteers like to come along to as well and get involved so massive amounts of work have been done through those days um, huge kind of projects that we couldn't do ourselves that would have taken us forever and a day they've been able to come in a day they've brought up to 50 volunteers and they can power through a, a tremendous amount of work and they bring the materials for the project with them so we've we've had roads and paths built 
We've had bike shelters, we've had wood stores, uh, we've had the veg beds all basically kind of discovered, rediscovered. So we've, they've done a phenomenal amount and it's, it's really yeah, helped us get as, as far along as we have. Hopefully in future more people will come down and, and use the site. We, ideally we'd like it used you know, every day of the week. We'd like people, you know, more people coming to enjoy the area, more, more people coming to events and you know, kind of learning. Um, more schools visits definitely. Uh, schools are coming down to the John Muir Awards. We'd like to offer more of these opportunities. And we'd also like more volunteers because you know, there's so much that we are doing, but there's even more that we'd like to do. And to do that, you know, we are all volunteers. We're, we're volunteer-led and volunteer-run. And, and to do that, to sort of cover all the roles that you need to operate a site like this, you need a lot of a lot of willing volunteers. And we do have a lot, but there's always room for more.